Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm delighted to have you with us today. One of my two dearest friends in doing this indispensable work of afterlife research and education is our guest today. And we've been giggling, which is why I'm feeling giggly now. There actually are very few of us who have given this work all the personal time and effort that it requires to become really knowledgeable and even more difficult to find kindred spirits who have put in the time and done the work in this field of afterlife research to really know their stuff and who also work and teach in the field of genuine spirituality. But Sandra Champlain does all of that. And unlike me, she does it all on her own, which is what merely amazes me. My partner on this side of the veil is Craig Hogan, and I don't know how I could have managed to do half of what I've done without him. And my non-material partner is my spirit guide, Thomas, who is my pilot and my best friend in the non-material work I do. And again, without his constant guidance, I would be lost. But Sandra Champlain is what I never have pretended to be. She really is the captain of her own ship. I don't get how she does it, but she does it. I'm sure she's getting some spiritual guidance, but she's much less tentative about all of it than I feel the need to be. And Sandra... Sandra's just everybody's friend. She's a happy warrior for the truth and love. Just confident. She's she's confident. I think that's the main thing I need to say about her. She just spreads joy wherever she goes. And she's with a certainty in her own bright light that's stunning and wonderful to see. Sandra Champlain is with us today for the 16th time. She's someone whose beautiful work in the afterlife educational field is beyond compare. And for years now, Sandra's done her weekly Sunday gatherings in an, in, with an international team of mediums. And she's helped the phenomenal Brazilian physical medium, Sonia Rinaldi. You heard her name here before. But Sonia Rinaldi's work is immeasurable. And her successful movie, which is entitled Rinaldi, is it wouldn't exist, frankly, without Sandra's help. And it's getting great play now and is now it's featured on Amazon. She she's getting as much support as we can give her from from me and also from Craig. And at this point we're doing all we can to help her. It's not enough, I know, but it's something. And Actually, um, I'm doing now all I can to help her today. We're going to have a wonderful time talking. So welcome, Sandra. I'm so happy to have you back with us again. Oh, Roberta, thank you. I can't believe it's 16 times. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. And, you know, I found something that I love. It's helped me through my life, and all I want to do is share. So that's really the wind beneath my wings. You know, what fuels my sail is just the fact that there's so much suffering around. And if I can do anything to make someone's life a little better, I'm going to share. So I wasn't always confident, as you know, I was scared to share this because I never believed in this world of uh, afterlife medium, psychics, all that stuff. So now though I know the greater reality, yes, I do. And so I can't help but share. I think the difference is you're organized. That's what you really are. You're very organized and you're fearless. I think that's another thing about you that makes you unique. You're, you're I don't know if I'd agree because that fear is there, but I go forward anyway. So you're, I think that's you're just going to say, you know, to heck with you fear. I'm just going to kick you to the side. I don't know what you, what it is about you, but you're just a ray of light. I'm so Thank glad you. that you're, you're doing this work because you just make, you show everybody that it's possible. Thank you. Very, very happy to have you here. It's so nice to see you. You look terrific. And look, you know, watch just, I love watching you shine. So where are we going to go first with this? We have a lot of things to talk about. I, I think when, when we were talking about what to talk about today, I mean, look at you, even your flowers are the same color as your lipstick, which is the same color as your shirt. Now, I would never think of that. It wasn't planned, Roberta. 
It was all synchronicity. I'm not that good, my friend. I'm not that good. I know you love me and I love you, but I don't have it that synchronized. Oh, bless your heart, my dear. Well, I let's see now. Um, we, we talked a little about what to talk about today. Yeah. And, and you thought it would be good to talk about ways of communication. And yeah. but it but it just so happens that I've been getting a spate of emails from people who want to know how to communicate with their loved ones. So I thought, oh, my goodness, you've been reading the minds of all these people sending me emails. Now, are you that good that you can do that? You can read all these people's minds. I'm I'm not sure you're really that good, but somehow you are. So let's do that. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, I don't think I'm that good. I think that <laughs> we all get these seeds planted in our minds for what's I needed. So. And I think those in the unseen world speak to us in what sounds like our own voice. So it sounds like just an idea we have. And meanwhile, there's someone behind the scenes saying, talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> true. But, but, but it's true that the, a lot of people are sort of getting the, the idea that maybe that maybe it's possible. 20 years ago, people weren't expecting that it might be possible. But more and more people are thinking, I should be able to hear from my loved one. Yeah, and I think actually, Roberta, people do, and they chalk it up to just their imagination. Yeah. And, you know, there's conflicting reports here because I know people who say, you know, my loved one's been gone a long time. I've never gotten one sign. Yeah. And so on one side of that, we hear that in the afterlife, there's no time, right? So when we cross over, we are in a place, I think it resembles very much like Earth. I think, um, you know, through our thoughts, we communicate and we can create and that we can learn anything. We can grow, we can experience. If you have a dream to be an artist or a singer, whatever, you can fulfill upon that. But we live in kind of a virtual reality where we can easily be with our loved ones at the very same time looking in on them, knowing that they're healthy, that they're well. And we may see sadness, but we know in a blink of an eye, we're going to be all together again. We get to see the greater picture of life. And so many people say our life here is but a thread in the fabric of our soul. So I know there are people that say, oh, my, maybe my loved one doesn't love me anymore, that you know, I haven't gotten any signs. But in reality, maybe, you know, may, you know, it's possible that they know that we are healthy, we're alive, they're going to see us tomorrow in their world, and they're busy doing things. And also, you know, we all believe and know that there's certain things that happen to us in life that give us some real soul growth, and maybe they don't want to stop us from that. And the biggest thing is they may be communicating with us and we're just not picking up on the signs. I think the chances are a hundred percent or as close to a hundred as you can get. People just don't pay attention because it's usually not a shout. It, they don't, it's not a shout. It's a whisper and they don't, they, they think, Oh, I may have heard, heard no that i'm sure i'm just imagining that or this or it may not have been a voice very often the earliest signs that people get are sense scent signs are extremely common in the first few months the first year in fact i think they're by far the most common signs um when i was 14 my grandmother died and I, this is long before it never occurred to me to start studying the afterlife. But I recall that for the first year or so after she died, I was smelling her, it wasn't perfume. They used to call it toilet water. Why toilet water? I don't know, but they did. She, she had this distinctive, you know, which she would put it on that a very distinctive scent. I was I was smelling that all the time right after she died. And and I thought that was odd, but it never occurred to me that was a communication from my grandmother. But of course it was, 100% it was. 
And people, um, I hear from people, because I used to talk about signs all the time. I don't, I should do a program about signs, but I just haven't done it lately. And um, then I started hearing from people telling me their sign stories. And there are some wonderful sign stories. One, one woman told me that she and her husband went into the, their, um, her mother had died. They went into her mother's house and they could smell this very distinctive kind of ethnic food her mother made. It was like a goulash. And when they went into that house, they smelled it as if her mother was cooking it right then. She said, oh, my goodness, can you smell that goulash? And he said, oh, yeah, I think I can. And then he thought, he said, oh, no, I, that, that's not possible. And And she said, as soon as he said it's not possible, immediately he couldn't smell it anymore. That's how powerful our thoughts yeah. are. You can turn it off and you can... T- <laughs> we humans how stupid. easily buy into this, that this is all there is. And we all have this ego that comes with us. Yeah. That's never our friend. It never says any nice things to us. And it's always right. saying bad <laughs> things. Yet we believe it, you know? Right. Nah. Uh, And I think too, Roberta, we need to be in the present moment to feel these signs and to smell the scents. She said she could still smell it. He couldn't standing right next to her smell it anymore. Right. Maybe he chose not to. Maybe his mind kicked in. He still wanted to, but because he stopped believing it. He said, oh, no, I could. That's not possible. Yeah, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, right? The great quote by Henry Ford. That's true. I remember that quote. Exactly right. Yeah. And we can talk to our loved ones about signs. And first of all, when we transition, I don't think that we know in an instant every bit of knowledge in the universe. I don't. I think we work with others. I think there are. There are people there who teach us how to make. There's halls of learning. There's people that can help us communicate. You know, there's people that are in the spirit world that are really involved in technology, right? So they may help some younger folks who are really big on their phones or technology communicate. But, you know, my dear grandmother died a one week short of her 91st birthday. I don't think she's going to try to use a phone no. or EVP or those kinds of things to communicate. You know, but there are people to teach her. Yeah, if... If she wants to. Is if they want to send it, it's like a postcard. They want to send a postcard home saying, I've arrived safely. <laughs> See you soon. And then they want to go have fun, but they want to make sure you know they're okay. Right. Yeah. So if I can, I want to just go through some of the different ways that I feel that we can get through. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like a, like a top five countdown, kind of. Yeah. Not that good, but... Um, One way we've heard of is electronic voice phenomena, and that I put on the bottom of the list because not everybody's going to get a recorder or spend the time trying to communicate with their loved one. And it takes your loved one on the other side, learning how to manipulate sound waves to make them into voices. There certainly are a lot of people that are interested in that. So I just did an episode a few episodes ago on my Shades of the Afterlife podcast about EVPs with some recordings and things. And so if people have have wanted to talk about it, oh, it was me talking about it. And then using everything, don't you? Not everything, but I use different clips from Dr. Sherry Pearl and from Sonia Rinaldi. Oh, yeah. Oh, Uh, there's a beautiful clip from Sonia Rinaldi that's a little voice going, Mommy, I can talk through the EVP. And it's, oh, it just gives me goosebumps even to think of that. But it really takes time and like learning a different language. We record the sound of maybe a fan or the shower running or water running. And then you have to train the mind to listen in for whispers beyond those sounds. So it it really is time and it's dedication. And it's not something where you just try it once. This is a something you work with your loved one and say every Thursday at 6 p.m., let's do this together. And, you know, they're learning as much as you are. So oh, it sure. takes, it takes something. It really takes something. Yes. And so I put that at the bottom of the list because it's not so easy. No hard. Very next, hard. next up on the list are dreams. We would love to have our loved ones come 
during dreams. And I I know a lot of people have dream visitations and the way we know their real communications other than our subconscious, there seems to be a, a beginning, middle and an end to the dream. Whereas most dreams are just bits of randomness. Also, there's that feeling of love. They're not scary, you know, none of that. It's truly a great feeling of love and connection and that it's real. Dream visitations are are dreams that are much more real than your normal dreams. And if people have maybe a nightmare and their loved one shows up, I mean, that's our subconscious working things out. So real dream visitations, love is involved. And not too long ago, I spoke with a dream expert, an author, Teresa Chung, and had a great conversation. And one of the things she said is we need to pay, first pay attention to our own dreams. And so she recommends journaling dreams and getting a bunch of them down because our subconscious is trying to work out things. And so the dream itself doesn't mean anything, but it's the feeling that's in the dream. So if you have a lot of anxiety in your anxiety in your life, chances are you're going to have anxiety in your dreams. And she says, by nature of journaling them and having a conversation with yourself, awake saying, you know, what am I anxious about? Okay, what's the worst that can happen? So if we deal with some of these emotions that we have in the dream world, then we make space for our loved ones. Now, again, we need to talk to our loved ones and say, mom or dad, grandma, would you be willing to come to me in a dream? And before you go to bed at night, take a walk down memory lane. Don't be watching TV and watching scary things, but instead take a walk down memory lane with them. Think of what it was like to hold their hand or go on a vacation with them or the sound of their laughter, you know, or if you make wake up in the middle of the night, put plant that seed again and just see what happens. I am a firm believer in keeping a journal, whether it's signs, whether it's inspired writing, which I'd like to talk about too, whatever that may be, even dreams, because we have this ego mind that is quick to chalk things up to our just our imagination. And I've got news for everybody who's watching or listening right now. That is how those in spirit communicate with us. It is through our imagination. When you think about when we get over there, people say, oh, you know, we communicate with our thoughts and we can be anywhere we want and all that. Yeah, we are souls having a human experience right now. So we can do that right now. So it's important to be in touch with our feelings, really. You know, they say gut instinct, but how does it feel? And once we get in touch with our feelings, sometimes pictures and memories and thoughts come in, or we can even get the ball rolling and we can um, start feeling things from, you know, memories from our past. And that's kind of knocking at the door saying, hey, you know, are you with me? And you may be surprised at what could happen. My dad once did a slideshow in my brain and record speed of things we had done together. And Roberta, they showed up as like images very quickly, things that were long forgotten to me. Yeah. And I know, I know that I would have had to really work to put those images together. So it's very subtle, but it just snuck in through my imagination but that's how they communicate. And anyone who's taken a class in mediumship knows that you pay attention to your feelings. You pay attention to the thoughts. The spirit world uses your own thoughts, your own memories to communicate. And it it works through the imagination. So I ask everybody, don't be so quick as to just brush off. It's just my imagination. It's like that. Yeah. Yeah, Peter Wright tells us that all the time. He's a frequent guest too. So uh, that's anywhere, anyone who's a frequent listener knows from Peter, that's your imagination is very, very much, very powerful. It's very yeah, much yeah. how your mind and your, your loved ones communicate with you. So that's wonderful. Great piece Absolutely. of advice. So that's, that's on the list. Where else do I have? I got the signs. I've got EVP. We can ask them for signs. Let me just cover that a bit. That was dreams. So, okay. So we can ask them dreams, but we can also ask them for signs. So that's on my top five lists as well, because we have to be aware. And if we are so busy thinking about the day, thinking about the past, 
you check in you check in your phone a million oh, times oh yeah a day. phones are in, are the enemy in a lot of ways they I'm, can be they're handy but they can be the enemy yeah but they they take you away i was speaking with somebody yesterday and he just said to him god is nature anytime he can be outside and be present with the birds and squirrels and trees and just the majestic of nature you get into that present moment and that's a yes. great way yes for them to come in. So as far as signs go, um, we need to be present because there could be a car right in front of you with a license plate that has your loved one's name on it. Of course. And now did they create that license plate? Maybe not, but they could have directed you driving that you'd be behind that car and mm -hmm. they directed your eyes to look at just a certain time. Or mm -hmm. sometimes they can direct you to turn on the radio at a certain time and lo and behold, there's a song that you wouldn't even imagine playing. Uh, I remember one gal whose brother had passed, had written to me, and she had said that her brother liked this really weird song that never came on the radio, ever. Well, all of a sudden, it was played. No matter what station she turned on, <clears throat> excuse me, that that song was there so it was just a little subtle thing so we're looking for the unexpected oh yeah that's big though when you think about the unlikelihood of that yeah we know that's not a coincidence at all yeah that's amazing yeah but we can ask we you know there are things like feathers and sometimes you know unfortunately there's a bird that caught its demise right around the corner so a feather may not be the thing, except for I spoke to a, a mom whose son had passed and she asked for a specific white feather, like a big white feather. Yeah. And it didn't tell anyone other than the son. And she had packed a suitcase and had traveled. And in her check baggage, when she opened it right there on top was a big white feather. So to <laughs> me, that's a sign. That's, that's huge. A that's a huge sign. Yeah. But keep a journal of signs. I spoke with um, Bob Ginsburg from uh, Forever Family Foundation the other day, and he had really some great things to share. But by nature of journaling, you can pay attention to more things and you write them down because, like I said, that ego mind wants to pull for this all being nonsense. None of this is real. But when you start looking and say, oh, my gosh, OK, I pulled up into a car and you know, I saw the license plate that said, uh, you know, John 45. Okay, that's the year he was born, whatever. Or you find the penny that says the date of, of your loved ones, yeah. whatever. Um, you know, and you start writing these things down. When they're in the written form, when your mind is telling you it can't be true, and you start looking and you have to remind yourself of these wonderful, wonderful things that happen. And you can ask your loved one. You can say, um, Okay, a butterfly. Okay, maybe a purple butterfly because there are there any purple butterflies? I don't know. <laughs> now, you may not see an actual purple butterfly, like a real one. You may. Who knows? But all of a sudden, you might be on a web page and all of a sudden there's a, you know, purple butterfly or you may, you know, these little things. You know, I think our loved ones want to play with this as much as we do. You know, they're creative as well. What can they do? They want us to be happy. They you know, grief is normal. It's awful, but they want us to be happy. They do. And if oh, they can do absolutely. something. Absolutely. So yeah. much. And we get to keep our sense of humor in the spirit world too. So uh, sometimes things are funny. I mean, you know that my um, former boyfriend passed away about a year right. ago. And Roberta, when I pay attention and I'm in the present moment, and sometimes it's, you know, when I'm taking a bath or a shower, when I'm just in that mode, he will put like a one liner funny comment in my brain that is laugh out loud funny. <laughs> and I am not that fast with my wit. I'd love to be, but he'll come up with something. And I know it's him just because I feel that feeling and I just start laughing, you know? Oh, how so wonderful. We do I'm so glad, sweetheart. We do have our thanks. We do have our sense of humor. Yeah, I don't mourn the passing of him i think he's doing a lot of good in the spirit world and uh, having he's fun happy you could tell he's happy if he's sending you jokes and things oh yeah and i've had plenty of medium friends that bring through things from him that i just are like oh my gosh you know nobody <laughs> can know these things nobody no one no one no one no one 
But the other thing I wanted to carry cover is journaling. And I think this is probably the top thing that I think people can do. Some people call it automatic writing. People, some people call it yeah. inspired writing. You know, technically automatic writing is when a trance medium has their eyes closed and they're out of it and the hand keeps moving and things yeah. get written down. So that's yeah. the technical automatic writing, but it's actually inspired writing. And I know that I've interviewed many people that feel their loved one communicates with them through writing. Lots of people. And a little experiment people can do. I don't even say it's a little experiment. I think it's the same thing with journaling. Get a special notepad just for you and your loved one. Or if you're somebody who likes to type it out, I'm sure you can do that on your computer as well. What I've learned for any kind of communication that comes from our higher self or from our loved ones is in the beginning, it could be 99% us and 1% them. It can be because you, know, you can start writing, uh, dear dad, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but uh, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I'd love for you to come through in my writing and whatever. Oh, you know, and you write, just write down whatever is there for you. And some people choose to write with their opposite hand and in response to them. I don't think that's necessary. But if you could hear your dad, for instance, and, you know, what would they say? Just get the ball rolling. Because what I think is while we are practicing how this works on our side, they're practicing how it works on their side. Okay, what do I need to do to plant seeds or to, put myself right into Sandra's shoes and be able to, to answer her. And so get the ball rolling with, you know, how would my dad answer me? Well, Sandra, you're doing the best you can, whatever it may be, but make this a practice, say two or three times a week. And before you do spend a few quiet moments and just have that loving prayer to your dad or whoever that may be. And you want to connect and get the ball rolling by, remembering the sound of their voice, maybe remembering some of those shared memories you have, and then just start writing. And what happens in time from so many people that I've talked to is they start feeling more and more the presence of their loved one and more and more the words that the loved one would say and how they would speak. And I remember talking to the author Frances Key and right after her mom passed, she just started hearing her in her own in her mind and started writing things down and the more this happened the more she realized that there's no way she could make this stuff up it wouldn't come to her that fast write down words as they occur to you and sometimes after you read it back there's a whole story involved so it takes having that prayer if you want to call it a prayer beforehand and talking to your loved one but then just being peaceful in your mind. You know, we've got the left brain and the right brain and one's creative and one's analytical. The important thing is, is not to analyze, not to write down three words and say, oh, what did I say? Don't do that. Just be in the present moment and just let it flow. Some of the words may come from your own higher consciousness, from your soul. Uh, some may be your loved ones, but don't discount what comes out because we all have this very divine, wise soul that can often answer many of our questions and, and what we know. And I do think our loved ones, they get involved too. And sometimes maybe you feel like drawing a little picture and they can work through that way. But I think that's something that is proactive that we can all do. And like I said, make an appointment a couple times a week, whenever that is, so your loved one knows when it's going to happen and record these because most of the time, even when we think of them and we, we want them to step close to us, you know, we could do that, Roberta, we could close our eyes and maybe I could ask my grandmother to come close and close and maybe put a kiss on my cheek and just feel, do you get the goosebumps? Does the energy change? That's all stuff we can do. But I find personally, when I start doing that, next thing you know, it's like, did I leave the coffee pot on? Right. <laughs> and so I get, I get distracted. I get yeah. derailed, but by writing it down, it forces us to really concentrate and just be in the moment and then just like relax into it. And it's a, a great exploration. And I know 
I know that our loved ones love us. I know they know how hard it is to be a human being and all those things involved. And they want nothing more than while we're here to have the best life we can have. That love, it never dies. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. So those would be my reasons, Roberta, my ways. Yeah. What do you do when you think that something might conceivably be a sign? And But like the fellow who walked into the house and he thought, mm, no, that can't be a sign. What, what do you do? The first thing you do is say, thank you, and say it aloud. Say, thank you. Please do it again. Or please send something else. Re even if it might not be a sign, it might not be. Say thank you aloud to your loved one. Say, thank you, I see that, or I hear that, or I smell that. Please do it again. Respond positively to your loved one, because that helps them. Speaking aloud gives them positive energy and responding to them positively encourages them because if someone has recently died and they keep sending you signs and they're subtle signs, they may just give up after a while because it's hard to keep trying to get your attention and you're not responding. I mean, think about that. Put yourself in their shoes. They're in this beautiful new place. They're, you're sad. They're trying to make you feel better. And nothing that they're doing works. Don't you think you'd give up after a while? You probably would give up after a while. Absolutely. Don't you think, Sandra? Speak I, aloud. Say, I, I love you. Do. Thank you. Thank you. You know, they say if grandma gives you a gift year after year on your birthday and you never say thank you, she may stop giving you the gifts. Yeah, you won't get a gift anymore. Probably not. It's grandma, but maybe you get a card on these days. Maybe you get a text, but if you engage and let them know that what they're doing is successful, you know, yeah. or that you're keeping your eye out today for the purple butterfly or whatever that may be and give them space and give them time. Don't be demanding, but it is so critical. I think to keep track, even of if it's these. only a white butterfly with a little, little baby yeah. changing to it, or maybe even the true purple is changing maybe if you just see a butterfly say thank you correct it encourage them mm -hmm. because and we'll know when we get there how difficult it may be or how much we really try to implant thoughts and feelings encourage and them and they'll keep doing it and maybe correct. it's going to be maybe the connection will get stronger and stronger because there is nothing more satisfying than to, than to help get a real connection going. I mean, I hear from people who have made that connection work and it is the most beautiful thing. I mean, it's not the same, especially if this is, you know, a romantic partner. It's really not the same, but it's not bad. It's something in it. I mean, look at Sandra. Yeah. This, this, is, this is an old boyfriend of hers and a year ago he transitioned. And it's not, it's not bad, right? Now he's making you giggle in the shower. I think that's pretty wonderful, actually. I do too. And it's funny because, like I said, I could never come out with something that funny that fast. Just like how my dad did the slideshow in my brain. It's something different. It's something that, like, I, you know, I'd have to work really hard at that. I'd have to, you know, every so often I can say something funny that's in the spur of the moment, but not usually. I've got to think about it, practice a joke ahead of time. I, know, I think you're pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Roberta. When, when, we, when we go out and we have a margarita and it's... It, we, we do laugh. A lot of, we do a lot of giggling. But I think that's really great that he's still sending you a year later. He's still making you, making you laugh. That's pretty great, actually. It is. It is. And he didn't believe in any of this. You know, he was supportive. <laughs> ah, laughs on him now. <laughs> if it was my thing, but he didn't believe. Yeah. And so many people think by going to a medium, that's their one way to connect to the loved one. And, it, and they're not knocking mediums because they do serve their place. But the thing is, yeah. your loved one can multitask. You know, I do think that they continue to learn and grow and explore in the afterlife, but they can keep a foot in both places and they can quickly be right they back. They can multitask. Us. So, really so many true. people just hope, you know, they can't talk to their loved one until they see a medium. No, 
talk to them every day. Yes. Talk to them every day. That's why I say writing it out helps because our thoughts can be jumbled. And also, Roberta, if you were to, if I had a tape recorder in my brain, everything that's, I think, it's all over the map. Yeah. Whereas if I am talking to you right now, I'm directed at, I got to think about what I'm going to say and then I say it. Same thing goes through with our loved ones. It's very hard for them to pay attention to all the thoughts going on. And every so often, you know, dad, can you hear me? And then I'm back to thinking about something else. So by writing it down really for, focuses us yeah. or we can speak it out loud. Sure we can. But I just like the idea of journaling because you can also put those signs in there. You can use it as a gratitude log if you like and, you know, go to bed at night with the things I'm grateful for that happened today. Uh, and I mean, that sets you up for some good dreams as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a firm believer in not watching TV in the evening. I, I think that that was a wonderful piece of advice. I haven't watched TV in the evening for 25 years. I do. I watch it in the evening sometimes before I go to bed, but I have something funny on, you know, yeah. something, that, something that I don't really have to get emotionally involved in. Yeah. You laugh, something lighthearted. Yeah. You know? There's a few sitcoms. But if you out. don't watch TV in the evening, if instead you're reading either something spiritual or you're journaling or you're, you know, you're setting yourself up for good dreams. You, to you, music. I mean, yeah. it, it's much easier then to get into the kind of mood and the the kind of mindset where you'll be at, able to meet with your with your loved one in the night. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And, and, and people ask sometimes, does he miss me? Does he miss me? No, they don't miss us. And the reason is really simple. They're right there with us all the time. If they want to be, right. they Correct. don't miss us at all. <laughs> they can be right here. We can't see and experience how they experience things. You know, they say that there's colors in the afterlife and music and things that they don't nothing on earth that we can experience that we know it's not there's nothing comparable yeah nothing at all and so we don't know what it's like for them and how grand it is and all the things that they can feel so we just have to trust because someday we're going to be there and we're going to be in the same shoes trying to do the same thing but until then like you said really say thank you pay attention write it down talk to them and they are with us and there's plenty. Of Say I love you and know that they love us. Yeah. Roberta, between my two podcasts right now, I've hit 550 hours of episodes, which is crazy. You're so, just trying to shoot right past me because we correct. were at, both at 500 in the spring. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. No, I'm yeah, not. She, she's, this is, I'm this not. is a very competitive woman right here. You I know? am <laughs> not. But the thing is, it's like I'm hungry for more. So for anyone who might be new to this, the information is out there, but it takes something on your part. It does. It's reading books, listening to podcasts, doing your own detective work. But there's plenty of scientists and doctors and all kinds of credible people, even regular everyday people that have had credible experiences. And to hear these stories, you start thinking, oh, I've had that happen to me. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, just yeah. reminding everybody, we all have that inner voice that's crying to say, none of this is real. Don't believe in it. Because I think there's this game of life that if we knew 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that these, we are an eternal soul having this human experience, that life is an illusion. You know, I mean, it's a difficult one for sure, but I don't think we'd get as much value out of this life. So maybe that's why we have this, this little voice. But again, when you pay attention oh, to that voice. Oh, just step on that voice. I'm at a point so in my much. life. Oh. Why do we believe it? Why do we believe it? Oh, because we're human. So be gentle on ourselves. It's just, it's just a joy. This is a joyous place to be because none of it is real. It really isn't. This is all just a happy illusion because, because of the fact that it isn't real. What's real is what's beyond it. Otherwise, this would just be a tragedy. Think what a tragedy this would be. If it was all going to end, if all your loved ones 
we're all going to just disappear. I, I mean, the fact that none of this is real is what makes it joyous because all these people that we love are all eternal. I mean, I, I just, I look at all the people that I love. I look at you and I know you're eternal. I, we're going to be able to have tequila forever. I mean, think about it. This is so joyous. It is joyous, Roberta. However, I think for most times and most people, there's tough and there's struggles. But I know, and I think everyone can agree, those struggles and toughest times in our life, we learn, we grow, and then we get the biggest gift that we're able to help our fellow traveler. So I think everything that we learn, even the tough things, they're all, you can call it growth for the soul, but it's all having new experiences. And I think that's a big part of being here. And then also making a difference it, for another it is, person. It is. And, and I couldn't, and I accept I couldn't that. be where I am today or enjoying a margarita with you if it, I hadn't gone through the <laughs> absolute true. worst pain of my life. And that's the loss of some of my loved ones. I think I'm a sissy. Going for looking for answers. So miss, just the trust. Sissy. I couldn't bear it. If I if I thought this was going to end, I couldn't bear it. But I know it it will never end. And by the way, this is only water. <laughs> I wouldn't judge. <laughs> oh, we're going to meet some folks in person someday, and they're going to offer a margarita. Where did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> next time we should do it with margaritas and just see how that feels. No, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I think when I was younger, I think I think I I think I didn't care as much. I think I was still in the thick of it, and I think it was okay with me that it was a maybe. I think it was okay. It's not okay with me now. I truly, I truly am impatient now with the scientists. I blog every very seriously. Actually, I, I do. And I do two blogs now. Because I have to do one for Craig every week that he posts on on secreality dot com, but um, I'm I'm pretty angry now with the scientists because they literally have to be going around with their eyes tight shut and their fingers in their ears going near 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 near, or they or because the evidence is so overwhelming that they're wrong at this point about reality. It there it's just the evidence is just so overwhelming. So I'm just. I'm pretty annoyed with them at this point. There will be a tipping point, as there is with everything. Everybody the says same that. Same people it, are going to say, oh, I always knew and I always believed in that. I always did. I understand that. But it, but there are so many people who are afraid now. You hear from them, too. They are afraid. And I don't want them to be afraid. Because life is such a joy once you understand that it's eternal. There is so much joy in it. I mean, I understand that the suffering is necessary. That you don't have to suffer as much as people suffer. A little suffering is good. They don't have to have as much suffering as they have. Yeah, it's true. The suffering, unless it's physical suffering, most suffering starts right in that mind. And we can do something about that. starts with gratitude i think like how you would say thank you every I, moment i just find it i something. just find it so unbearable though to see people i mean sometimes i write a long email to some of these people because i can't bear to see them so destroyed by the, the by losing such a close loved one and they'll say i just i just can't without him i can't go on and and you know they mean it and i just can't bear that I'm with you. We give everything we can. Yeah. That's why it's so important for me to also include grief in everything that I do. And for those of you who might be new to seeing me or hearing me, um, you're welcome to have a free copy of my book. If you go to wedontdie.com, scroll to the bottom, sign up for my mailing list. Of course, you can cancel anytime, but you'll get a, a free copy of my book. It says the first few chapters, but it's the whole thing. And chapter That's 10. Beautiful. Say that again, Sandra, so people are sure they can. We, we don't die.com. 
scroll to the bottom of the page, just enter your name and email address, and you'll get something that pops up. It says you can read the first few chapters of the book. It's the entire book. Chapter 10 is how to survive grief. And it talks about what happens to our biology and our chemistry when we grieve, because most people don't ever expect grief to hurt as much as it does. We get terrible side effects, you know, the anger, the sadness, sleepless nights, whatever those may be, forgetfulness. It's all our brain and our machinery uh, rebuilding neurotransmitters. There's so much that's out of our control, but there's so much that's in our control, like trying to sleep, eating right, getting some sunshine, talking to people, being in the present moment the, mo the most amount you can, um, and other things as well. So that is all in chapter 10 in my, of my book. So I really recommend be gentle on yourself. for people who are grieving. Because I'm not nearly as good with grief as Sandra is. She's she's oh. a very good grief counselor. So everyone, I recommend that if you're in that place. This is you're a great showing book it off. Read. This is the book. And again, yeah, you can purchase it anywhere. But if you want just a free copy of it, just the PDF, you can certainly Beautiful. have it. We don't die dot com. You can join us for one of our Sunday gatherings. Happen every Sunday at uh, two o'clock New York time. That's eleven. AM Pacific. It's about an hour and a half. It is motivational, inspirational, and we do a free medium demonstration. And we have usually about 200 people a week that come, Roberta. It's oh nice. my goodness. That's wonderful. And we, I, we are, we've come to the end of our time. I'm so sorry about that. We've actually gone a little over. Um, but I, I just want to close with um, something that was said by the first certified 911 fatality, whose name was Michael Judge, he's a Franciscan friar and the chaplain of the New York City firefighters on that day. He this is this man is truly God's servant. He his what he often said, and I think I'm going to start saying this as part of my prayer life. He often said, Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say and keep me out of your way. What a beautiful prayer that is. Beautiful. Sandra, I love you, my dear. I think you are doing for certain God's work. And um, I can't wait to see you again. I'm going to get to see you in December. We'll figure out a time to have our little lunch and our margaritas together. <laughs> I love you too, Roberta. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And everyone, again, Sandra's website is we don't die.com. And I strongly recommend her Sunday gatherings. Uh, she has people there from all over the world and um, mediums who do wonderful work. And she is doing God's work for sure. And again, we have come to the end of our time. In fact, we won't be able to say everything I normally say, but that's all right. You hear it every week. <laughs> This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm very glad you could be with us for this very special, special e episode. Please never forget, you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, never, actually, you never had to begin because you're eternal. But you certainly never are going to end. And when you get what that means, you truly get it. Your life will never be the same. You are eternal beings. Next week, our guest will be Jonathan England. Jonathan is the author of If I Die Before I Wake, The Five-Step Roadmap to Enlightenment, Prosperity, and Your Life's Purpose. I was first drawn to his work, frankly, because it's based on what is also the source of my work and the source of Sandra's work, which is the teachings of Jesus. But he takes a somewhat different approach to all of it. And I thought it was interesting. I'll be interested to hear what you think. So please be sure to join us next week. And this week, of course, our wonderful friend Sandra Champlain has been with us for the 16th time. Sandra is basically, she's the only person I have met who who is the next generation of me, kind of. She's do, She did her own work, dis, discovered that life truly is eternal, and she is doing afterlife education and spiritual education as closely as I can see to the way I would want to do it. And um, I consider her to be the person that I want to carry on my work after I graduate. So I, I've asked her to please take over my work, if it's possible, um, when I decide to, I'm going to probably leave. I don't know when that's going to be, but um, I've asked her to do that. And she has said that she would. 
So thank you again, Sandra. Um, I loved every, every time I get together with Sandra, she makes me want to, to smile at it. At the same time, she convicts me once again that, that we're doing the right thing. She and I and Craig and a few others. Um, most people are, I think are trying to sort of have a life doing something else too, but not, not the few of us that really understand how important this work is. And now, of course, it's time once again to mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource online for all things afterlife. Just go to seekreality.com and start to learn for yourself that your own reality truly is eternal. Learn from Craig Hogan, who is, I think, the person who knows the most about all of this. Learn that your life never, ever is going to end. And teachingsbyjesus.com is your single resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the greatest teacher of all, Master Jesus. Christianity, the religion, was created by the Roman Emperor Constantine and not by Jesus. And as that religion dies, the genuine teachings of Jesus can finally come alive. My own nonfiction books, you already know, we don't have time to recite them now anyway. If you want to talk about anything or just plain, you know, if you just want to say hello, you can always contact me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I always answer, answer emails, but it can take me a while because I get so many of them. Just please make sure you give me your correct email address because I take every email seriously. And sometimes I'll write a long email and if it bounces, it makes me really sad. You don't want to make me sad. So just make sure you give me your correct email address. And all of the, I think we have only 530 of them, but well, we, we will try to catch up with Sandra if we can. I don't think we can. All of those audio podcasts can be found on wherever podcasts are found, and you can listen to new ep- audio episodes each week with the Seek Reality app that you can find wherever free apps are available. You also can see new video episodes each week on Rok- Roku or on Fire Stick. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing that you are a powerful eternal being and you most of all in this entire universe you are infinitely and eternally and perfectly loved you've been listening to seek reality with roberta grimes roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share knowing the truth changes everything